Hello, everybody. I'm Richard C. Wilson, founder of the Family Office Club. And today we're doing a member spotlight interview with GNLT, which is a group focused on import export of LNG, as well as green um, hydrogen projects. And I have with me here a board member uh, of the group, Frank, the CEO, Zubin, and the head of business development, Nick. And if you want to start out um, Frank, with kind of a one-liner of what you're up to as a team to kind of describe some of the exciting projects that you're focused on, that'd be great. Great, perfect. Um, the uh, GNLT project is located in South Central Chile. Um, it's in the country's second um, economic uh, basis. Um, and the project itself is a floating project, offshore project. Um, it will bring uh, LNG, liquefied natural gas, into the South Central and Southern Chilean energy markets, as well as into the um, Argentinian energy markets uh, the, from a Pacific entrance point. Um, the uh, project had a uh, um, six-year path to being fully permitted, shovel-ready. Um, it uh, is uh, being avidly uh, pursued by a number of the world's super majors, um, uh, a number of the world's uh, largest energy banks. It's a significant, if not a major project for South America. Um, it has a great commercial basis. Uh, the, these, this is a, uh, what's called on the Chilean side, a pocket market. And on the Argentinian side, it's a, um, uh, it, it's a high population density market, so the opportunities are great. It's a naturalistic monopoly, and at the same time, it addresses a humanitarian basis, uh, a, a human needs basis, uh, South Central Chile being the most air polluted region in the world. 23 out of the 25 most polluted cities in the world are actually in South Central Chile. Um, our uh, clean energy bridge project will be able to remediate that from the date of operations in a uh, very short order in five to seven years, we'll have a very, very uh, significant, uh, probably a majority reduction of the air pollution there. On the Argentinian side, uh, the project will uh, prevent the, the uh, fracking and uh, despoiling of the Patagonian uh, hinterlands. Uh, these are the most uh, pristine areas in the world, um, but the, uh, Unregulated drilling uh, has uh, caused uh, a, a lot of um, humanitarian uh, crisis on that side of the border. So with uh, one uh, importation project, uh, we're going to uh, be able to reduce energy costs for these populations significantly. They pay a very high price for fossil fuels. Um, so we're bringing in a clean fuel that's highly profitable for our country, but also reduces energy costs for both the Chilean populations and the Argentinian populations. And uh, as I had said, we're fully permitted, shovel ready. We have a, uh, a, a large amount of attention from players throughout the world uh, in the overall energy space and our particular niche, the LNG niche. And um, uh, I, I think uh, this one, uh, addresses a lot of things, profitability, sustainability, and the um, uh, concentration of a uh, energy basis that provides us with the claim of a clean energy bridge to a green hydrogen future. A lot of the gas that we'll be bringing in will be used to create uh, hydrogen, which will allow for the infrastructure to be developed um, uh, this new uh, green hydrogen infrastructure that's being rapidly developed throughout the world. Chile's made a massive commitment, $50 billion to green hydrogen infrastructure. And uh, our project uh, will bring in the natural gas that's required to produce those volumes of hydrogen that will allow for a transition over to green hydrogen. And our succeeding projects are um, producers of massive volumes of green hydrogen. So we have a complete package here. Right, great. Uh, Zubin or Nick, do you wanna add anything to that before I move on to the next question? Well, just something very important to add to what Frank said is, when we conceived of this project, the key drivers behind us getting into Chile was that this region was completely neglected from 
an energy point of view and from a pollution point of view. This, the pollution in this region has been largely driven by the lack of energy. And the predecessors to our project tried to address this problem, but they did not keep in mind the human safety element. So when we conceived our project, we took into account the population, the environment, the business, and sustainability. And that's the reason why we've been able to get our project permitted, keeping the neighborhoods, the populations away from such a, an industrial plant by picking up a very good site and having it away from populated area. Uh, we endeavor to go carbon neutral, so we will plant as many trees as possible so that the amount of CO2 emissions that we give out would be consumed by the new trees that we plant. Uh, we're definitely looking at the sustainability by going into green hydrogen. And as Frank mentioned, that our project will bring down substantially the, the cost of energy in the region. So I think we have managed to check all the major markers to make this project attractive from a socioeconomic point of view. Right. Great. Yeah, it makes sense. Obviously, there's a huge need in that area. Um, one thing we always like to ask in these member spotlight interviews is kind of what your value add process is. In this case, what you're really doing is building an energy solution. So I'm guessing a lot of that process is regulation and permits and finding the right location, which have done a lot of that already. Where, where are you guys in terms of the project process and what does that roadmap look like in terms of your process now going forward from where you are today? Right. At present, we just going to start the engineering. Uh, once we complete the detailed engineering of the project, we will be ready to start construction. We've already completed the design and the technical validation. So now we just need to go into the engineering of the project. So we're pretty much in the last mile. Great. Yeah, that's exciting. And if somebody is looking at a energy investment like this, whether it's LNG exporting or importing or uh, green hydrogen, what would be a smart due diligence question or an area for that investor to look into? Because I often find that, you know, the investor knows a lot less than what you guys know as a team. So what would you suggest they, they look at as an investor that's most important? I think they should definitely look at the region, the industrial basis of the region, because they are going to be the big customers. So that addresses the, the customer point of view. They should look at the disassociated aspect of this region from other sources of energy. So this is a region that cannot be supplied energy from the Argentinian terminals or from the two LNG terminals, which are in the north of Chile. So this is an isolated, gas-ready, plug-and-play market, which just needs to be supplied with natural gas. So that 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 also addresses the demand point of view and the fact that it is a gas ready region that can consume gas from the get go. And definitely, I think there should be a lot of stress around the fact that we are looking to get these cities off the pollution grid. They are highly polluted cities with people burning wood. There's a lot of wood being burned throughout the winter months. There's a lot of uh, asthmatic uh, problems for the population over there, pulmonary problems for the population over there. I think we will definitely be addressing a lot of the sustainability issues in the long run. In, 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 in addition to that, Richard, um, uh, as, as Zubin was saying, um, every fuel and energy source in the region now, and it's a fairly big region, there's 7 million people, it's a what you would call a pocket market if you were talking about India or China, and it is a stranded market, meaning it's cut off. So we have a naturalistic monopoly. Um, and as Ubin pointed out, we have a fully developed gas grid. Um, uh, billions of dollars have been put into developing the gas grid and the transcontinental pipelines into Argentina. The only thing that they were lacking was dependable supply of gas. So we had a six year path to uh, being fully permitted. Um, and as uh, Zubin had pointed out, um, the uh, fact of the matter is that uh, we're a um, natural monopoly. Why? Because we have the only site that's viable for a terminal like this in all of South Central Chile on the Pacific Rim. 
Um, th this is a 1700 mile long coastline and this is the only uh, place where you could actually put a terminal in and get it permitted. Um, once we achieved full permitting, meaning we have all permits in hand, we have all awards in hand and all concessions in hand uh, that give us the, the uh, right to build the project and give us the um, uh, land, uh, I should say water surficant, it's offshore, but a small piece of land uh, for the connectivity. Um, we have a 50 year concession on that and uh, wide open access to um, all of the pipelines um, on both sides. But we also have a compressed natural gas basis and we have a liquid LNG basis so um, this uh, area, um, it may not have a huge population, but it has a huge basis of business. As Zubin said, there's a huge industrial corridor. Two of the largest forestry companies in the world um, have uh, gigantic uh, activities there with um, uh, tens of thousands of square miles of um, forestry plantations. Um, it's the second largest array of salmon farms in the world. Um, uh, they're the largest exporter of apples and cherries to China out of this region. So even though it's uh, uh, not well known um, internationally, it's actually one of the best business locations in the world for an energy project like this, but also for any project. Why? Chile is probably, in, not probably, it's the best business destination in Latin America. Um, your money and your investment and your person and your property are actually much safer in Chile than in the United States. Fact. Um, the uh, country possesses half of the world's lithium and half of the world's copper, so investors have no concerns uh, about any sovereign currency risk. Um, that's 18 million people holding half the world's lithium, half the world's copper, and significant uh, uh, proven reserves of other precious metals and industrial metals. On the Argentinian side, it's even, it's even more uh, robust um, from uh, a standpoint of uh, minerals, agriculture, opportunity, so on and so forth. What they need is they need natural gas. As Zubin pointed out, they're burning um, uh, massive amounts of wet pine wood they are burning bunker fuel. This is you know, what comes out of the very bottom of a refinery, the worst polluting fuel in the world. They're running uh, uh, massive arrays of heating and power generation on bunker fuel. And there's a thousand megawatts of highly polluting coal plants in there. What our project does, once we step in, we bring the natural gas and clean energy bridge. We bring in the natural gas to produce the hydrogen that's going to allow for clean power plants to be built here. So. This is an extremely significant project. Right, awesome. Great, yeah, sounds exciting. Uh, what is the, um, the number one kind of $100,000 piece of advice you could give to people listening here today that would help them with understanding LNG investments and the opportunity there, or maybe something related to uh, green hydrogen opportunities? Is there something that uh, one of you has learned along the way that you'd wanna share with investors that are kind of researching these areas? Well, what we've, what we've basically set up here, Richard, is a waterfall project on the clean energy bridge basis where we start off with a very clean fuel, natural gas, but then through the process of what's called methane reformation, which is taking steam and natural gas, um, flashing the steam against the natural gas, the natural gas then produces hydrogen. Um, this is sort of like field of dreams um, before we're able to backfill all of these volumes with green hydrogen, we have to produce clean hydrogen from natural gas, from the methane. Um, this will allow for the infrastructure development, um, the uh, uh, clean energy plants, meaning uh, the, uh, the, the waste to energy that we use, the biomass to energy that we use to produce the green hydrogen. So for anybody interested in investing, great jurisdiction, great starting project, great transitional basis. So for impact investors, um, the humanitarian basis um, is incredible, but the next generation, we, we go from uh, this natural gas basis over to the green hydrogen basis, and it, uh, it provides them um, a hard asset investment and a great jurisdiction with a tertiary basis of um, complete, and utter carbon neutrality and the provision 
of the world's next fuel after the fossil fuel basis begins to be wound down and the hydrogen basis begins to come into preeminence across the world. And right. uh, we, we have the financial backing of the country. As I said, they're committed to putting $50 billion into uh, uh, the uh, hydrogen infrastructure. And for half of the country and for a big part of Argentina, we're the only way that they're going to have the volumes of natural gas that will allow for this to be accomplished. So we're, we're in a naturalistic monopoly across the board. Um, we're, we're in a very moral position for what we're doing, but we're also in an extremely lucrative position. These are the highest price energy markets in the world, um, but we're going to be able to take advantage of that uh, delta, um, yet at the same time provide the um, indigenous and um, uh, 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 European populations that this country is, uh, has a large indigenous population, a large mixed ancestry population. Um, we're going to provide these folks with a lot of uh, environmental relief, but we're also going to provide them with extreme economic relief because uh, we're, we're not looking to go home with uh, all of the money. We're looking to get um, our shareholders fat and happy, but also get the um, folks who sit in our footprint, um, who we're very well enmeshed with in offset projects, but get them to a position where um, they're not spending 30% of the family income on energy bills, we can cut that in half. So this, this, this is win, win, win for everybody, Richard. Right, great. And where can someone learn more if they wanna connect with your team and schedule a phone call, or if they see a way to work together with connections they have? Uh, what's what's the best way to get in touch? If they look at the ribbon running below um, uh, the screen here, um, uh, all of the uh, information is uh, prominently displayed. Our our website is uh, nice and short, um, and uh, our our phone number. So um, as you see, it stops occasionally for folks to take note of it. So I, I, I think we're pretty well prepared as far as folks being able to get our information there. But the company's name is GNL. Talcahuano SPA. Um, we are uh, domiciled with that company in um, Chile, um, but our American holding company is domiciled uh, here, uh, quite obviously to be redundant in the United States. And for investors, they have that uh, ability to be uh, safely ensconced in the United States with their investment in w one of the best uh, offshore business investment uh, uh, opportunities. Um, while being dollar denominated U.S. tax uh, basis, and uh, it, it's it's uh, essentially uh, the best of all worlds for an investor. Great. Well, thank you. I appreciate everyone's time here today. I'm happy to keep in touch as you guys grow and complete this project. I mean, my wife is from Brazil, and I've spent time in Buenos Aires, and um, be exciting to come down. I'm in the region sometime and see the project underway. So, appreciate everyone's time here today. That's great. And thank you so much, Richard. And great seeing you today. And thank you, Zubin. And thank you, Nicholas. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks so much.